In this video, I would like to talk a little bit about the Tudor Black Bay Pro. Now, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this watch on the leather strap or on the fabric strap. I feel that the transition between the strap and this slab style case is a little bit clunky, but this on the bracelet, I really enjoy. I am a fan of this on the bracelet because it has that good transition. Now, we are going to talk about the height a little bit later in the video, uh, but let's first start with the movement. Tudor calls this the MT5652 caliber. It is a cost certified caliber that will have 26 joules. It will beat at four Hertz and will carry 70 hours of power reserve. And in the movement, there will be a free sprung balance with a silicon hairspring. Uh, we have a full balance bridge when it comes to the architecture or the layout, but Unfortunately, it does carry a rather basic or industrial looking toolish finish that you will not be able to view because the movement is shielded behind a stainless steel case back. The nice thing is this is a true GMT caliber and Tudor seems to be the leader in doing an in-house true GMT at that entry level luxury price segment. I would classify them just slightly above Grand Seiko um, you know, at this about $4,000 price segment. So that's nice to see. But one thing about this caliber, it is about <laughs> 7.5 millimeters thick, which is a little bit surprising to me. And that is really adding to the overall height of this particular sports piece. Now let's go to the dial details. We have a matte finished black dial in a domed shape with yellow accenting on the water resistance designation it's also found on the GMT hand. And note that the date wheel is color matched to your off-white loom and your off-white printing. And I think that's a nice detail. Now, one of the greatest all-time hand designs, in my opinion, that is very legible and instantly recognizable is the snowflake design. And of course, this watch has the snowflake hands of which I am a big fan, but I recognize not all watch collectors enjoy the uh, snowflake design. There will be applied ceramic markers that are blended with loom. The loom is very good in low light or no light conditions, and it's done in the green color. Now, uh, continuing here with the dial details, there will be a Swiss made signature that is set on the outside of the outer track. And when you look at this watch from an oblique angle because of the shape of the crystal and that dome effect of the dial, you really get some nice reflections and then in certain angles, it completely disappears from view. And I think that's pretty cool myself. Now, zooming out, let's take a look at the case. Let's take a look at the crystal. We have the classic Tudor Black Bay case. It is rather tall. It does have good finish work with polished chamfered edges, circular brushed lugs. This is classic Rolex when it comes to the case finish. And I really enjoy the Sunray brushed bezel. This has the classic look of the original Explorer II bezel, and that's a good thing in my opinion. I mentioned the shape of the sapphire crystal. It's a box shape, and there is no discernible anti-reflective coating that I can see, uh, but the watch will have 200 meters of water resistance and a signed thread down crown with butter smooth action. It, uh, it's really one of the highlights of the watch very smooth winding, nice setting, nice action when it comes to utilizing this in-house MT5652 caliber through this uh, coin edge signed crown. Now let's go to the bracelet. I mentioned that this watch really <laughs> feels at home on the bracelet. And I think it's slightly divisive because uh, from what I've heard from watch collectors that I interact with and that view my channel, a lot of you very much dislike the faux rivet style of the stepped oyster bracelet. And I think some people really like it, but the majority of watch fans that I've talked to uh, wish that Tudor would just, you know, they, they wish that Tudor would just drop the faux rivet style. But fortunately, there are screw pin connectors. This has a very good feeling of being a solid bracelet, well finished, well executed. And note, that the inverted end link style here does not fold all the way down. It's uh, prevented from moving past this point. So just be aware of that. The best part about the bracelet 
is this outstanding clasp. The T-Fit, in my opinion, might be better than Rolex's glide lock system that I have in my own Submariner. I like the signed flip lock. I like the ceramic ball bearings in the closures. Again, this clasp is just top level, and I don't know why you would want this on a strap, uh, say a leather or the fabric strap, because one, you don't get the T-Fit, and then two, you don't get the nice transition between the case and the strap, so it ends up looking too tall, but on the bracelet, it does not feel or look too tall. Now, wearability. I mentioned how it, it feels at home on the bracelet, and I just want to mention that I have 7.25 inch wrists, and I do feel that it is appropriate. It doesn't feel too small. It doesn't feel too large. Uh, kind of, you know, with my experience, it feels like a taller 16570. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of cool in my opinion. That's a really well-beloved Rolex design of which I've owned that in years past. And imagine this. Imagine if Tudor released a Black Bay Pro in a polar color configuration I think the internet, I think the internet might break if that happens. Now let's talk about negative elements. I mentioned the silly faux ribbit style links. I don't think uh, many watch collectors like that. The other thing is this just doesn't have any discernible anti-reflective coating on the sapphire crystal, which is uh, something that bothers me myself. And the last thing, it is slightly hard to come by from an authorized dealer on the bracelet. They do sell very well, so the availability uh, is not ideal. You might have to wait a little bit if you want to get your hands on one of these versions. But just to summarize, uh, to end this video, I think that this is a very strong release. And in my opinion, it's almost like Tudor was about to make a better Explorer 2, uh, but they had to say, hold up, right? We can't do a better Explorer 2 and offer it for less than half the price of a Rolex Explorer 2, because you look at this, this has the retro charm, this has the detail work, this has the T-fit clasp, uh, this is just you know the right size. It is a little bit thick, but that's one of the reasons I think that <laughs> you still have demand for the Explorer 2. Again, I don't think that this family can offer, right, the Rolex Tudor family can offer a better product at the more affordable price segment why would people want to wait for an Explorer 2? That's something to consider. And I'd be interested to hear your opinion in the comments section. Now, that being said, I'd like to end by showing you a super imposition that I crafted of a custom Utah watch collector, Black Bay Pro or Black Bee Pro or Beehive Pro, whatever you wanna say. Uh, but this is something that I'm hoping uh, to get produced within the next year. And let me explain what's going on here. So I'm a part of a Utah group of watch collectors called the Horological Society of Utah. And we are trying to get 40 individuals together, uh, largely from our group, the HSU group, to come together and submit a design to Tudor for them to produce. Now, there are a few rules, there are a few stipulations. You have to pay full retail. You have to wait up to a year, but you can get an existing model that's been in production for at least a year uh, with a custom logo on the dial and a custom engraving on the case back. So we thought that this was a great opportunity to do something Utah related for those of us watch collectors with heavy ties to the state. Now I've been thinking about this again for the better part of a year and I've come up with a few different ideas. I looked at different models but the thing that made the most sense was the Black Bay Pro because we are landlocked here as a state and we have uh, just a lot of great activities down in Southern Utah in the desert. We're up here in the Rocky Mountains where I reside in Salt Lake City. So I want an adventurer's watch or a sports piece that's not a diver. And I thought that this one really fit the bill. I like the retro charm and the state icon for Utah is a beehive and it's been a beehive for well over a hundred years so i took the beehive motif from our state flag and i placed it down on the dial in between the six o'clock marker and the hand stack and in dimension it's about the same length as your stack of text on the north side of the dial and the color completely matches the yellow accent of the gmt hand 
So I think that's pretty dang cool. There is a little bit of dimension here to my rendering or my superimposition, and it's to remind this uh, collector of the ties to the state of Utah. Now, we are doing this through the Horological Society of Utah, so in nod to that, I placed a small HSU ghosted out over there by the three o'clock position on the outside part of that track near the date as kind of a subtle reminder like, hey, it's time to do another Utah collector meetup with the Horological Society of Utah. It's kind of like an Easter egg, and it's done similarly to the Swiss made down at the six o'clock position. We're still working on the case back design. We have a few different ideas we're working through, but hopefully we're going to have this approved and start taking orders and you know getting that 40 spots filled up. So I'm really excited about this myself. Yes, I would personally purchase a Black Bay Pro, but I'm holding out for hopefully this cool custom Utah Collector Edition that will probably be done in a run of about 40. You need 40 individuals to get together uh, to make one of these custom Tudor watches. So I don't foresee many more than 40 uh, getting on board with this, with all of the rules and stipulations uh, and whatnot. So if you're interested, stay tuned, right? My email address is on my channel. Uh, you can also drop me a line in the comment section. I wanna thank you for watching this video today. I appreciate it. Reach out with questions. All relevant links and uh, recommended authorized dealers for Tudor will be in the, uh, in the description here of this video. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.